In this video, we will be tasting and talking about summer 2021 batch of traditional Dongding Oolong tea. Here we are tasting our summer 2021 batch of traditionally made Dongding Oolong tea. Uh, Dongding Oolong is probably uh, the most renowned Taiwan tea, or at least uh, the most renowned traditionally made Taiwan Oolong tea. Um, it comes from the area of Lugu in southern Nanto County, and uh, it's where we were born and raised in our life of Taiwan tea, really. And um, we finally uh, are able to source uh, Dongding Oolong, the way it was made 50 years ago or so, or up until at least 30 years ago, uh, which means that it's left unroasted. That's the traditional part of traditional Dongding Oolong tea, is that originally this type of tea was not uh, standard in terms of its standard processing methods. It wasn't roasted. Uh, that roasted factor evolved from uh, tea merchants buying batches of tea and uh, if they still had last year's tea come the next year uh, they would roast it and make it into a different type of selection they would just create a roasted version of tea uh, if they still had leftovers from the previous season or the previous year so we like to uh, offer both and represent both versions of it the roasted version is the most popular now mostly due to the competitions and the standard uh, the flavor profile standard that has been set by the competitions which is a roasted version there are assets to the roasted factor but that's not what we're here to talk about today we're here to talk about the unroasted version of traditional Dongding Oolong tea. So um, this comes from our good friend, Mr. Chen, who is uh, really our closest um, friend as a tea farmer and a tea teacher and a tea source. We source a good amount of tea from Mr. Chen. It slowly has built over the years. We started out sourcing uh, his Shanlin Shi High Mountain Oolong tea. Uh, and then uh, his small leaf black tea, and now his traditional Dongding Oolong tea. Uh, back to his family tradition, uh, he learned this method from his grandfather originally, and his father as, uh, in turn. He's been making it, uh, or watching it being made since he's a child, actively participating in the processing of tea since he's 14 years old. Uh, he's over 50 now. And uh, yeah, we, we think it's a great opportunity uh, to be able to source tea from this uh, multi-generational uh, tradition uh, in Fenghuang village in Lugu Township, Nanto County, Taiwan. Um, so we started sourcing uh, this spring and you can watch the uh, YouTube video about the processing of that batch uh, on our YouTube channel, Eco Cha Teas. And uh, this is the second batch that we are sourcing. And um, we, it'll be proven by the tasting that I'm about to do, but uh, this batch was uh, harvested on June 10th. It's been allowed to sit for over two months now, almost three months, which we believe is uh, definitely a benefit to this type of tea. Teas that are uh, more heavily oxidized, if they're allowed to settle, it was, uh, it was vacuum sealed after it was uh, cured, so it hasn't been exposed to air. But something happens and the term settle seems to fit uh, or be most accurate in terms of what that is. The composition of the tea settles into itself, the flavor profile kind of just gels, and uh, it tastes better a few months after it has been processed, typically. Um, so, Bef without further ado, I'm going to go right into the tasting. I brewed uh, 12 grams of tea leaves in a 175 milliliter uh, Gong Fu teapot, starting for uh, about one minute and possibly going up to about one and a half by the fourth brew. I have first, second, third, fourth, and the fifth is, uh, has been brewed for well over probably about 10 minutes. Uh, we like to do that just to see where the tea goes when it is allowed to uh, jing pao, which means to sit and brew. We learned that uh, trick, so to speak, it's not really a trick, it's just a, a method of tea tasting from, um, well, it was our original source of Dongding Oolong tea several years ago. Uh, 
the father of our good friend, uh, that's the way he would judge a T. He, he's, his father is uh, about 85 years old now. Our friend has passed away since. And uh, just yesterday and today, Grandpa Leo is representing the traditional Dongding Oolong tea making tradition uh, at the Tea Research and Extension Station uh, main branch up in northern Taiwan. They did a seminar, a tea making seminar, uh, a kind of um, exchange of traditional tea making methods. And he was chosen to represent this tradition, which makes us uh, very proud. Uh, so, Grandpa Leo. Uh, likes to let his tea sit and brew. He thinks it's, it's a way to test it and you get a full uh, experience of the tea after it's brewed. He'll let it sit for hours. He just puts it in the tea judging cup, fills it up, goes out to the farm, works for a few hours, comes back and the tea is completely cooled in the tea judging cup. And that is uh, one of his ways of telling where tea is at and what it has to offer. Okay, here we go. First brew. It's simply my favorite type of tea to drink. It's, it's, it's just, it's unmatched uh, for me personally, mostly because of my personal experience. Uh, my friend, Mr. Chen, who made this tea mentioned, he didn't make a, a big point or about it or a kind of featured point, but he said, I think it's a bit, it has a honey fragrance, which indicates that it has been affected by the green leaf hopper. Uh, or other insects that create an immune system response in the tea plants that give it a certain honey character in the flavor of the brewed tea. I'm reminded of that now. It's fruity, but there's definitely a lot of, it's, it's, it tastes very honey-like, it's really true. So I'm very happy uh, to experience that now. It was very much less obvious a couple of months ago. And this is kind of what I've been secretly hoping for in being able to wait to offer this tea. Uh, this batch uh, is very timely, I think. Uh, we timed it right. It tastes really good. I'm just gonna have to keep drinking it now. I'll go to uh, brew number two. Uh, I remember uh, in the, the first time we offered this tea, I, I used the word uh, humble or modest. I'm one of those two adjectives because the flavor profile is not super pronounced. It's not, uh, it's not super, it doesn't have a, a floral bouquet. It doesn't have a rich, hearty, roasted character. It's, it's uh, subtle, it's more subtle. But when it's uh, made well and it's brewed properly, it's such a satisfying uh, flavor, really. It's got oolong uh, hui gan, so it's like this uh, after the the aftertaste and the fragrant kind of effort, not effervescence, but something in that comes up from your throat, and it's just so much aromatic. It's the aromatic oils, I would imagine, uh, that are adhering to your taste buds and all the way down your throat that are just exuding through your sinuses. And the, of course, the mouthfeel, it's a very uh, thick and... Um, silky kind of texture to the mouthfeel of the tea and it has a slight bite like oolong tea should have. Qingxin oolong, uh, especially traditionally made at this uh, elevation, this is about 750 meters elevation. So there's this whole comprehensive um, formula that goes into this tea that is uh, that qualifies as traditional Dongling Oolong. Part of it is the climate it grows in and the soil that it grows in. Uh, and then, of course, how it is processed. Okay, brew three. It's just so satisfying in, in a very um, non-complex way, if I may say so. Um, and if you if you like the more oxidized aspect of tea, but it's not it's definitely way I would say thirty to forty percent oxidized. 
So it's still quite distinctly separate from a Bai Hao or a Dong Fang Mei Ren, a, uh, Oriental Beauty. Uh, and it's, so it's closer, it's, it's still closer to the uh, high mountain oolong spectrum, although it's probably twice as uh, oxidized as a, a high mountain oolong tea. <clears throat> really nice thick mouthfeel to it. Just, it goes right in. It's just so easy to drink. And the aftertaste, that slightly dry, crisp uh, quality that comes from just a, a touch of astringency. No real bitterness. Mm. Uh, fourth brew, a little bit mellower. I think I remember brewing the third brew. I was just like, I'm just going to push it a little further. Uh, maybe uh, the fourth brew is back closer to a minute. So the third brew might have been close to two minutes, and it had a bit of a, a more of a slight bite at the end. Now it's smoother again, silkier. Okay, what other flavor notes? It's so hard for me to identify specific things. It's got some kind of stone fruit in there, apricot maybe, um, a little bit of butternut squash, something a little denser in terms of that sweet quality, but still uh, fragrant, aromatic. And that first cup really did remind me of honey a lot. It seems to have gotten a little more vegetal, kind of gourd-like, squash-like uh, as it brewed through, but still maintained its kind of dense, sweet quality. Um, so in terms of this year's weather patterns, uh, we were in a drought for over a year that lasted up until uh, May of this year. And uh, so it started raining not super uh, heavily in May. And that's when the growing season for this tea was. It was harvested on June 10th. So it basically started growing around um, the end of April, <clears throat> about 50 days. Uh, is the typical cycle. So it got rain. These plants were, uh, you know, dying of thirst practically. Finally started raining. It was a more uh, kind of uh, classic weather for spring. The plum rains came in around June. Then we got hit with a lot of rain through June after this was harvested. So I think we hit it uh, in terms of this may be the best quality uh, of uh, the best quality batch of traditional Dongding Oolong that uh, Mr. Chen makes this year. We'll see. I think there's going to be one more in September. Uh, and it's also uh, significantly cheaper than the spring batch. Spring and winter are the higher priced uh, batches of teas. That's how the marketing has evolved here in Taiwan. Anything in between spring and winter is... Uh, from somewhat cheaper to a lot cheaper. The higher up you go, the more difference in price there is between seasons. At mid elevation, it's something like 30% cheaper. So you can get this tea for uh, significantly cheaper than our previous batch. And I won't be surprised if uh, we have a chance to do a taste comparison that at least some of us will uh, choose the summer crop over the spring. We really should, all of us, uh, check out which season is our favorite out of the whole year. And we recommend uh, you doing that with our high mountain oolongs particularly. Okay, so here I have one, two, three, and four in a mug. I'm just going to have a quick sip of this. Very subtle, very composite. Again, nothing like super in your face in terms of the flavor profile. It's just, so, it's, it's more than soothing. There's something deeper, more uh, deeply satisfying than just soothing. It's got substance and it's got a little bit of bite. It's kind of, I don't know, uh, it could be compared to uh, a very mellow uh, aged scotch in that way. There's nothing super noticeable about the flavor profile, but it's just very satisfying. Good tea. <laughs> okay, here is brew five, ten minutes or so. This is probably going to take my face off. I'm already kind of perspiring by drinking that many cups of tea in this short time. But, oh well, that's just part of the uh, job that I have. <laughs> It 
it's stronger and more of a bite. It's uh, the flavor almost kind of like falls in upon itself. It just gets more concentrated. The after effect, okay. Most of the flavor is after you drink it. It just keeps effervescing. My sinuses are slightly exploding right now. So it's not super noticeable on the palate, but then that, that dryness, that dry effect that the, the aromatic oils are kind of evaporating off your tongue, and then it's just left with full uh, fragrance kind of qualities like distilled fruity kind of qualities. It's pretty amazing. I'm literally like, feel like the flavor's out here right now. I'm gonna take the last sip of this. Slightly underripe apricot. That's one uh, way I could pinpoint it. Or even a peach, perhaps. Stone fruit. Uh, if you like, well oxidized oolong tea with that still has a lot of freshness remaining we re recommend this batch to you the leaves uh, look quite uniform in color they look like a classic uh, summer growth the stems are thin and long because the growth is faster um, and but this makes it uh, when they they grow more quickly and they mature quickly and more evenly it's kind of ideal in terms of the processing. It's easier to process them in a more uniform way, get a more uniform oxidation effect throughout the leaf, and then uh, not too much variation among the whole batch. It's a winner. Uh, I'm going to have to check to see if there's any more of this because I didn't get a whole lot. So we'll see what we got uh, in terms of uh, getting a backup. You can get yours now. Go to ecocha.com, click on uh, unroasted oolongs, and you'll find traditional Dongding Oolong at the top of that page. Thanks for being with us.